Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh, and today, by popular request, we are doing a video about the Garmin dash cam experiment and testing that I have been doing with a few of their models. If you watched my Prius video, which I believe was right before this one on the channel, um, you might know that I have been looking for new dash cams for the two brand new cars that we just purchased, and I've been really liking two of the ones I've gotten and tried from Garmin. And in that video, I asked if anyone would be interested in a review and just just kind of a discussion about that and overwhelmingly you guys all said yes so that's what we're going to be doing today so in this video what we're going to do is i'm going to take you through a really quick really brief overview of the garmin dash cam portfolio then i'm going to talk to you about the three models that i have personally been trying and using in our cars and then at the end of the video is going to be an uninterrupted without talking over the top uh montage or reel of j just dash cam footage from the two that i'm keeping so that you can hopefully be able to make the best decision for yourself from there. Now, before we get started, I want to call out two things. One, none of this is sponsored. I bought all of this stuff and all the cameras and everything with my own money. None of this, so no opinions, none of the what I'm going to show you anything in here has been paid for by anyone but myself. And second, I got some complaints on my last dash cam video um, where I, because I didn't tell you how to use it. And so I want to be very clear up front here, this is going to be a review. It is not a how-to. So this is not me showing you how to use your brand new Garmin dash cam. This is me trying to give anyone who's looking to purchase potentially one of these dash cams um, just my thoughts and context so that they can, again, make the best decision for them. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out by talking about the model lineup. And again, it is pretty complex. Starting at the left, the lineup starts with the Dashcam Mini 2 on the low end at 129, which we'll talk about here, and goes all the way up to the Dashcam Live, which is their version that has 4G LTE connectivity, so you can live view and everything from anywhere in the world, though it does require a data subscription to use that feature. That costs $399 on the high end. And in between, you've basically got models with every kind of different spec and capability that you might want. However, it's important to note that as of now, they max out on resolution at 1440p. So Garmin does not currently, as of the time of this video, offer a camera that does full 4K. Now, I know that there are dash cams out there that do full 4K, which is 2160p, and I think that's great. But for most people, I think even 1080 is adequate. So that's the model lineup. Again, there's basically a dash cam for everyone in that selection, and I think it's really great that they offer so many. Now, let's talk about my experience and this little experiment I've been running. This all started when I bought this brand new GX460, which you may have seen videos on here on the channel. I really needed a new dash cam, and I didn't want to go with the OEM Toyota one, which I've tried in the NX. I just didn't feel like it was worth the money. So. I tried Garmin because I've heard really good things about them, so I figured might as well give their dash cams a try. So the first one I started with was this Mini 2, and I really liked the compact footprint of it. I thought it was so cute on your windshield. It's so small, no one's ever gonna notice it. And by and large, it is perfectly fine. If you're just looking for a basic dash cam, I think it'll do the job. The footage that comes out of here is actually better than what comes out of the Toyota dash cam, and all things considered, just fine is just fine. The problem with the Mini, however, is the small footprint was achieved by removing the internal battery from this camera. So unlike the larger models and many other dash cams out there, this Mini does not have any kind of battery in it, which means that this Mini cannot do parking detection without a source of power from the car, which for me was a big problem because that's half the reason I want a dash cam is to be able to see if I come back to the car and it's smashed or whatever, I want to have some kind of record or be able to figure out some in some way what happened. Now, the way Garmin got around not having a battery inside the Mini like some of their other models was to create an OBD2 adapter which provides constant power to this camera. The problem with that is it was constantly recording even overnight and what I ended up with when I went to check the memory card was hours and hours and hours and hours on end of the back of my garage door. So. That to me counts out the Mini right away because this is lacking again, again half the features and capability that I'm looking for in a dash cam. So I'm actually going to be, as soon as I'm done with this video, uh, packing this back up and sending it back to Amazon. 
After that, I moved on to what I really think is the sweet spot in the lineup with the 47 and 67. Now, there is a 57 in between these two in the lineup that basically splits the difference in terms of specs, price, and features. However, it's only $30 cheaper than the 67. So I think if you are looking at either one of these, which I do highly recommend, that you either choose to go base and cheaper with the 47 or you spend the extra $30 to go with the 67. Now the cool thing about both the 47, 57 and 67 is that they have these magnetic mounts and so what you get is a little sticky disc that you put on your windshield and then these cameras basically just magnetically mount up to that. So if you have two cars the way that I do and you don't want to invest into dash cams you can buy one or the other put each of the two little metal discs on the windshield of each car, wherever it makes sense to, and then just pull the dash cam and take it with you between your two cars. All right, so let's dive into the cameras and we're gonna start with the 47. At 149, this is truly, I think, the best value in the Garmin dash cam lineup because it's only $20 more expensive than the Mini, which we already said is lacking some features and has some really weird quirks about it. Definitely worth spending the extra $20. And because it has the same specs as the Mini, unsurprisingly, the footage should look exactly like it does coming out of the Mini, which is just fine. The color is good, the lighting is well controlled without shadows being too dark or highlights being too bright. And this is the camera that lives in my new Prius, which is my daily beater kind of car. So just like the car itself, good enough is good enough. And that's the case at all times, whether day or night. Night footage in these cameras isn't the best in the market, and we don't have any kind of info red night vision, but it's perfectly serviceable and will give you all the documentation you might need for an accident that happens after dark. And the other thing that I really like about both the 47 and the 67 is that these cameras record extraordinarily stable footage. Okay, now let's talk about the 67. And at first glance, just looking at these two side by side, you'd be hard pressed to tell which is which. The 67 versus the 47 is 1440p. So we have a higher resolution sensor and image file that comes out of this camera. And we have an extra 20 degrees of field of view on either side. So in total, this camera has a 40 degree field of view advantage over the 47, which gives you a much wider view at things like junctions and intersections. And that extra field of view is also where the extra pixels come into play. Although you might think that having the extra resolution means a sharper image, those pixels are actually used to make up for the fact that this camera is capturing a much wider image. So you're not gaining, nor are you losing, any sharpness of details in the final video compared to the narrower lens of the 47. You're just seeing less in the 47 than you do in the 67. Other than that, image quality and final picture looks pretty much the same between these two cameras, which is just fine by me because again, I think the 47's footage is perfectly fine. Now here I have to tell you that Garmin's advertising is slightly misleading about the 67. They say that the 67 can do 1440p resolution and 60 frames per second uh, video recording. However, while that is true, they can't happen at the same time. So you can either do 1440p at 30 frames per second, or you can do 1080p at 60 frames per second. But again, the top two tier specs in there don't happen together, which I think is a little bit, again, misleading. Now, the deciding factor between these two for most people is going to be whether you think the 67 with its wider field of view, again, that full 180 degree field of view and its 1440p resolution, so 50% more, let's say, than the 47 is worth $100 more. I personally really like being able to see all that much more with the 67 and the bump in resolution is nice but not a must-have so I recommend both of these very highly the only one I don't recommend is again this stupid little mini 2 which I am going to return <laughs> in the next hour or so here um, these two will be sticking around uh, 47 again we'll probably go back to the Prius 67 will come back to the Lexus um, but again the cool thing is as well you can mix and match and swap depending on whatever scenario you think you might be driving into so yeah, I hope that was helpful. This is gonna wrap up the talking part of this video, but again, stick around if you wanna see the montage without talking over top of all the dash cam footage I've compiled here um, in different times of day, different lighting scenarios, different roadway types, etc. And before I leave you here, 
One thing I also want to add, a lot of you have asked whether or not there's any way that you can like private message me or direct message me. And I don't generally give out my Instagram or anything else, any other kind of social media forms. So I have set up an email though for you all. If you want to email me anything at all, questions, comments, email me here at the address that you're seeing on screen. I will try to get back to you as always as quickly as I can, um, but this was something that a lot of you have asked for and so we'll give it a shot and see if I get any mail. I'm super excited. If any of you do want to email me, I'm always happy to chat and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching and again, stick around. Let's play the uh, film, the real footage montage. <music> Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you.